So uh, today we're here with uh, Ross Taylor. Uh, you are the chief fat officer. I love that title of Love You Foods LLC, but you're best known for the product F Bomb. So Ross, uh, welcome to the show. Hey, well, thank you. I appreciate it, John. Nice to be here with you. Well, the reason we reached out to you is because, first off, I, I absolutely love, I don't know if it's your tagline or just something on your website, but like right when you go to your website, it's, we make keto easier. And instead of branding yourself just a keto, uh, a, sorry, a keto company, you follow that up with, it doesn't matter if you're keto, primal, paleo, low carb, or just plain healthy, it's a uh, important. Uh, good fats are always good and important. So I love right off the bat, you're, you're, you're rising above all the, the diet stigma and just talking about healthy fats and products. So, uh, how, uh, of, of all that list of, uh, diets or philosophies, where, where, where do you actually land personally? I land squarely in the keto camp, but I think it's important to to not try to be militant or, you know, try to convert people. Uh, there's a real strong tendency, it seems, for people to just embrace something. And and that's great. We love the enthusiasm. But, you know, sometimes people are so locked into the latest, greatest thing they found that they, you know, beat up other people who don't do exactly that. And, you know, I realized that this was this was very much an iterative learning process for me, you know, getting into true keto. I came in through low carb and then went paleo and um, it was very much a blend. And we we strongly believe that everybody is different. You have to figure out what works for you. So I personally am long term keto. Um, Kara my wife and business partner and co-owner here uh, came in through paleo uh, and I sort of talked her into keto, but yeah, we are, we are very much definitely in the keto camp, but trying to do it in a way that's really natural. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's a fantastic, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's tough, right? I mean, we, we get challenged a lot with, with uh, the day to day and, and doing it natural and, you know, caring about, the quality is is quite a, the challenge. So, if I remember right, it wasn't just you and your wife. You have you have like other members of your family that you've also j joined the uh, ketogenic lifestyle. Is that right? Well, no, not. And that's that's. I got to be honest. That's a bit of a, a challenge for me. Now we have a, we have employees working in the business with us. They are not family members. Um, we have friends who are very keto and with whom we've really built strong connections. Uh, at KetoCon, you would have met one of our friends. She, We might treat her like a family member. She uses a keto diet to control her epilepsy seizures. Uh, so when we met, Jade was working in the booth with us. And, and although we love her like a sister, she's not part of our family. Well, you can tell her that I, I, I just put her in with your family. So <laughs> that, your, that, your dog. <laughs> no, that, <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's, fa that's fantastic. And, you know, Ginger, you met our dog and then our daughter, our 10 year old daughter, Ruby, uh, we, we keep her fairly low carb, but you know, it's, I wouldn't say she's keto by any means. We try to just give her real food. Uh, I will say, you know, my sister who's a year younger than I am. I'm 56, so my sister's 55. And, you know, we have a family history of diabetes, and she struggles with her weight and and some issues. And I can't convince her that fat's a good thing, even though she sees what it's done for me. Um, you know, I'd love for my sister to get some of those health benefits that have, you know, changed my life or certainly improved my life. And uh, well, uh, sometimes I, I, even your own family doesn't get it. They hear that fat is bad for so long that uh, there's that stigma. Yeah, I, and so you know, I, we it's funny. I could, every situation that you just said right there, I could pick up and put it in my life. So uh, we've we've got yeah, my my wife's. Uh, my wife's father. I'd love he he battles that. And I'd love to get him on there, but. You, you know, if you think about it, if somebody's spent that long of their life being told something and then 
it's it's going to take a while to turn that ship ship. So so about how long then total have you been keto? I started 26 years ago. Um, so you were I keto before keto was that popular. I, <laughs> I know before it was cool. Uh, you know, which which goes back to the company. We were not by any means trying to find a fad or a, a keyword trend that was moving in the upward direction or anything, you know. Uh, we could talk about the, the business later, but I, you know, just the sort of backstory on me getting into keto, uh, my grandfather, after whom I was named, uh, was a doctor, an MD. He had three sons and I got they were all going to be doctors, even if they didn't want to be. And so my dad and both his brothers were medical doctors. Um, they all had diabetes issues. My dad passed away about 27 years ago. Uh, both his brothers were still practicing doctors. Uh, my Uncle Dean, who at the time was a cardiologist at Johns Hopkins, gave me an Atkins book and said, you know, uh, here, Ross, I think this is a better way for us to eat. We have this family history of diabetes and, you know, cutting out carbs or being low carb, I think is helpful with that, which I thought was pretty interesting. He ended up having a kidney transplant and a pancreas transplant. And they both, both my uncles passed away a few years later from diabetes related complications and struggled with weight and everything. And so I kind of embraced the low-carb Atkins approach. But as you know, um, he sort of soft-pedaled the fat message. You know, fat was so taboo back then even, it was worse than now. And so I was, I was for really 20 years, I was doing it wrong. I was eating too much protein. It was hard for me to stay keto because with the protein, I was still getting too many carbs. And I'd get cravings and I'd slip out of low carb keto and just be kind of low carb. And I still think it was helpful. I'm 56 and I, you know, I'm 5'10", weigh 165 and I'm pretty consistent there. And I haven't had any of the issues that run in my family. But it wasn't until about five or six years ago when I really started to moderate the protein and went high fat that it became easy. So. So that's my story. I won't say I'm strictly keto for 26 years, but very much back then I was I was keto for much of my life, and it it made a big difference. Yeah, I, it's I, I I can I can I I can let's just say I I can follow most of that uh, in kind of the same similar situations in my life. So so we already got quite a bit in this, and we haven't even talked about what uh, F bomb even does. So. If you wouldn't mind maybe kind of painting some pictures, I know you've got a couple product categories. And when you talk to them, would you kind of paint the picture of the situation where you would leverage that product? Because I, I think uh, we try to be pretty actionable here and we're running around all the time. And if you could kind of let us know, you know what, what need you were filling when you created that product, I think it'll help us kind of follow, follow along. So products, Absolutely. Dive, dive in. Absolutely. Well, like I said, you know, we weren't looking for a trend. Everything that we make and sell is stuff we were making for ourselves, and we just realized there's a market. So my first career, I was a police officer uh, down in Phoenix. I was, you know, trying to find healthy snacks and taking jerky. And it's amazing how much of the jerky you find in stores really has a lot of sugar anyway. But, you know, I take jerky or string cheese sticks and, you know, it's hard if you don't prepare in advance to go to a convenience store, especially back, you know, 24, 25, 26 years ago, it was hard to go into a convenience store and find things that were keto friendly. Sometimes you get a hard boiled egg or a stick of cheese, uh, maybe the hot dog with no bun, and that's always questionable meat anyway. So, you know, and then the last 12 years or so, I'd worked for wind turbine companies traveling around the world and again, trying to find enough that to take with me was difficult. So my wife and I started packing oils into little baggies and they would leak and we'd put them in an algae bottle just to keep them from exploding in our luggage. And so we ended up launching with three different oils initially and they were 
you know, coconut oil, uh, a blend. We call it the house blend now. We actually just described it by its contents initially, which was macadamia nut oil, coconut oil, and Brazil nut oil. For coffee, uh, now we just call that the house blend because that's what everybody's referred to it as. Uh, we have other oils. So we have three basic oils you would put in coffee or a hot beverage. Um, Tim Ferriss, of course, is big into promoting coconut oil in coffee, as are other people. Uh, and then the bulletproof coffee, you know, with MCT oil and things. We were packing our own versions of that. So we have an MCT oil to put in coffee or any drink. The nice thing about MCT oil is it gets assimilated and used pretty quickly, and it also stays liquid, so you can put it in a cold beverage. One thing that's interesting, you talk about actionable, uh, if anybody out there drinks alcohol, and we we know that you know we can drink a little wine, MCT oil is alcohol soluble, so you can take a nice sipping rum, put a little MCT oil in it, and add some fat to it, and uh, or a little tequila, a little MCT oil, some lime, and a little salt, and some ice, and you actually have a kind of a high-fat little cocktail. But, you know, we know then that. branched out and, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, uh, it would not be an unusual evening for us to be sitting in the hot tub outside watching the stars with a little sipping rum with a little MCT oil in it, uh, just a way to end the day. Now, alcohol doesn't work for everybody, and we're not trying to say you have to drink, but uh, there are certainly options. And then uh, we have other oils, a nice California olive oil. It's an extra virgin. We know the source, so we know it's real olive oil. You know, one of the challenges when you go to a restaurant, you can get a burger and hold the bun, and you have your meat and protein, put cheese on it, get a little fat, have a salad so you get some nice veggies and carbs that way. Uh, you get all the colors. but you never know whether the salad dressing at the restaurant, or even if you ask them for olive oil, if it's real olive oil. Uh, if you've well, read the book, yeah. Extra let's Virginity. Be, right. Well, let's be honest. We know it's not, right? I mean, you can. it would be rare that it would be a real olive oil or that the dressing was made with real, we would consider healthy oils, right? I mean. Yeah. And even if it's a good restaurant and they have real olive oil, how old is it? Is it oxidized? Has it been sitting in that little, you know, container, the little pore thing that's exposed to the air? It doesn't take long for the fats to oxidize, and they, they basically burn and convert, and um, then you end up with rancidity. And yeah. So we sourced a nice California olive oil. We know it's real olive oil, and we did the same thing with an avocado oil, which is just beautiful. That's from California. It's also extra virgin. It's real dark green, has a nice buttery taste. And uh, we put all those into packets with the intent that that's what we wanted. So when you go out, you can take a packet of olive oil or avocado oil with you, and you know you can get the burger, get the salad, hold the bun, and then use a known good quality oil of some kind on that to add fat. And then then we added nut butters because we were making our own nut butters. And we use primarily macadamia nut uh, just because it's got a very high fat content. We like the macro ratio. And those quickly became our most popular product because we realized that there's a kind of a dirt, there's a, a big need of keto-friendly snacks out there that are just natural. And so we've been very positively rewarded with the success of those products. But they're all in packets. Our biggest requests right now are to change the pouch shape. Uh, right now we use a pretty rectangular packet. And if you tear off the corner, it works well. If you tear off the whole top and try to put it in your mouth, it's a little wide. And <laughs> yeah. so we are working on, we're working on changing those shapes. In fact, uh, I think by February we'll have new pouch shapes out. And then the other request we get often is to have those in jars or bigger pouches, like a spouted pouch. And I expect you'll see those pretty soon, too, I think certainly by March. But so that's what we got. So something yeah. to put in your coffee in the morning, something to put on your salad at lunch, something to have as a snack that's all, you know, keto friendly. That was really our goal. So I. Uh you already kind of talked about how you got into the business. Um, 
can you, I've got to ask, can you tell, tell us about your truck? Because by all <laughs> means, that was, uh, your, your truck is a, is a poster billboard for your product. If I've ever seen anything. Can I, can I share something? Don't tell the audience, but we're actually doing everything sort of selfishly. <laughs> no, we, uh, you know, like making our products, we made them and in the form that we wanted. The same thing with the truck, you know, Kara and I and Ruby love to camp and we like the, uh, we like certainly camping and getting out. That truck is a converted ambulance. We bought a, a used medium duty Freightliner ambulance and then put a lift kit in it and larger tires. So it's technically what you would call a an expedition vehicle or overland vehicle, we can take it out on the forest service roads. It's uh, it's very much a statement, but it's also very practical. It wasn't meant to be something pretty. You'll notice there are you know, scratches down the sides from branches out on the forest service roads, but we want it to be useful. And we like taking it to 10Ks, triathlons, handing out samples and being able to camp in it as well. It's very much a a selfish business write-off that works well for us, but also is nice to be able to take to events. So thank you for that. Thanks well, for noticing. Well, I mean, it's kind of hard to miss it. Let's just say that. So um, so you you kind of talked a little bit about starting a keto business. And did, am I right? You just went from a really small place to now like a 5,000 5, square foot place. Is that is that right? Yeah. You know, we started in... A, city of Flagstaff. We're in Flagstaff, Arizona. We're up in the mountains. It's a very outdoorsy community, which is nice. Uh, Everybody here is really involved in some way in being outdoors, it seems. We're a a tourist destination. You know, we're on on the route to the Grand Canyon. And so we get a lot of people through town. We, We started in a city of Flagstaff incubator you know, where they help small businesses start. And we had a 400 square foot little lab space there that we got approved as a commercial kitchen space. And in January, we were there for about 18 months. And then in January of this year, we moved across the parking lot to their accelerator building, which had a 966 square foot space. And for us, that was a big move. We signed a two-year lease in that new space in January of this year and already have outgrown it. So We are in the process right now of moving into a new 5,600 square foot space. We've got a big uh, pouch filling and form, you know, pouch form fill seal machine that's on order, which will be here in January, which will allow us to increase our capacity a lot. But so today, we are trying to farm that out or? No, we've been doing it ourselves. Uh, And that was like. Yeah, we had we started with one small machine, ended up adding a second small machine so we could run two lines at the same time. Um, but we've outgrown that capacity already. You know, most startup food companies go through uh, there's sort of a map for that. You would say, hey, I want to make a product and say you want to sell coconut oil in a packet. You would find a place that would put that in a packet for you. They're called co-packers or contract packagers. You'll have a certain minimum order quantity, maybe 150,000 or 200,000 packets. And you say, here's what I want. You make it and they do it. And then you just sell it. We didn't want to do that. We initially looked at that as an option, but we pivoted and decided we wanted to control the quality, do as much as we could in-house We didn't want 150,000 or 200,000 packets of one thing sitting here getting stale. We'd rather do smaller batches and sell a wider variety of product. And we also like the idea, Kara and I both have worked for companies that have folded or moved, and we like the idea of being able to build a company and offer jobs and employment locally. So we're doing that all in-house. It was definitely the harder road to go, but it's worked out well for us. Would it be a trade secret if I asked you how you found the sweet spot for how big to make your batches? Oh, no, no. You know, we're really open. Uh, No trade secrets here at all. We settled on a one-ounce size. And again, I, I hate to keep going back to it's what we wanted, but 
you know, we tried different fill sizes for the oils and one ounce seemed to be just a good size for, you know, you get uh, 27 grams of fat in a packet of olive oil or something. And, you know, that just seemed like a good fit with our macro kind of needs, you know, uh, 27 to 30 grams of fat is about an ounce and that just worked well for us. I will say, again, we're, we learn all the time. Uh, if we have a complaint about fill size, people like the one ounce sizes of all the oils except for the MCT oil. As you know, without getting too, uh, let's be blunt, uh, if you drink too much MCT oil and you're not used to it, it can cause some Right, that gastral dis- yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, pretty, pretty that's well known. We've talked about it before. It. Yeah. Okay, good, good. And so you know, there are people who have said, "Hey, I wish we had a half ounce MCT oil," but you know, I've been using MCT oil and other oils in high fat long enough that I can put an ounce in my coffee and not have any issues at all. And so, if we were to change anything in fill size, it would probably be maybe offering the MCT oil in a half ounce pack, but um, like a, like a starter had any real complaints. <clears throat> yeah. Like a starter pack. <laughs> so you said uh, you openly share all of your trade secrets. So uh, oh, sure. prob- it's probably okay for me then to ask you probably the one thing that r- reminds me uh, that's a similar product is Jason's. Uh, they got those little nut butter uh, packets and uh, they're, they're, there, I think they've become popular for me at least because I've got children and you can pick those up at like a Starbucks or a Target in the line. And it's a fantastic kind of alternative. But I've noticed they tend to have the ingredient quality or, you know, you, you have to be careful you're not getting sugar and a lot of other things. So how do you kind of set yourself apart from some of these other products that are starting to I mean, obviously you were there first at, from a product standpoint, but now you've got, you know, competition of a, I, I'm going to, somebody from Jason's would probably yell at me for saying lesser quality. And that's not probably not what I mean, but I mean, you're definitely going up against uh, some steeper competition now. Right. And I, I will say it's, it's Justin's, uh, but that's oh, good. is it ju- is Justin's not Jason's? <laughs> okay, no, well, but maybe okay. I was changing See, the name to conceal the. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, no, I like it. I like it. Well, that just means that their their branding or marketing isn't, isn't locking the name into your brain so firmly. <laughs> so that's good. No, you know they were sort of the. They certainly were the originators of nut butters in a pouch, and we don't ever want to go head to head with them. We think the market is broad enough that we can be different. It is sometimes, you know, for us with a sales price that's, you know, like a packet of our macadamia nut butter is uh, two and a quarter a pack, I think. Uh, And you can go to the grocery store and get a small pack of Justin's for 50 cents now for almond butter, which is hard to compete. People kind of make that their base of comparison. Where we're different is we're using macadamia nut, which is an expensive nut. I will share that we, even ourselves, we pay 9 to $10 a pound for macadamia nuts. They're not a cheap nut. No, they're not. It's not like peanut. No. And, you know, our pouches are bigger and have more calories in them. And we wanted it to be big enough to be kind of a, to hold you till that next meal. Uh, No, Justin's is great, and they certainly have have been very popular with the CrossFit and Paleo community, but they do have a lot of varieties that have sugars in them and and other additives that we have stayed away from. So our focus, like our our macadamia nut with salt, has just those two ingredients. It's dry roasted macadamia nuts, so there's no peanut or sunflower or, you know, canola, rapeseed oil in it. They're dry roasted and then salt and that's it, two ingredients. And then we have one that's organic coconut butter and macadamia nut and salt. Our most controversial one has a little bit of organic fair trade dark chocolate in it. And then we're soon releasing a pecan coconut uh, nut butter, which again, all of our stuff will be different from Justin's in that our focus is always going to be high fat and not low carb. 
well, think there's enough room there, and certainly our growth has has proven to us that we can be different, and there are people who want that, so that's good. Well, I yeah, I, I do agree, and uh, you know, it's 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 tough though when you it's you compete against something that is different. You've got to kind of I, I guess talk about why you're different and then why somebody would pay more for a different quality or in this instance, a different macronutrient. Um, it's, it's just something that I want to make sure people get their minds wrapped around when you, when I, I don't think I've ever seen them for 50 cents a target, but I definitely know that they are under a buck and, and it, it is something that, you know, you, you know, people are going to think about. So yeah. switching, switching. If I can share with you the yeah. controversy. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, I mentioned our most controversial product. Uh, you know, we we think everything that we make is keto friendly because we are personally keto. We have blood test uh, ketone meters. We have, you know, a ketonics breath test meter. Uh, so we know when we are in ketosis, and everything we make, we eat and stay in ketosis. Uh, but the one salted chocolate macadamia nut butter we have, Kara and I both very strongly believe that we want to avoid the artificial sweeteners. And we include stevia in that, although a lot of people would argue with us on that point. Uh, we use in that pack less than a penny's weight of an organic fair trade dark chocolate. Now, Kara and I will have a square or two of 96% Ghirardelli dark chocolate at night. Uh, and a glass of wine, and we stay keto. So we know that having a very small amount of dark chocolate in a pack of nut butter works for us. But there are people who have said, oh, that's not keto. It should have stevia in it or erythritol or some of the sugar alcohols. And um, one person even said we were falsely advertising because we have a little bit of organic cane syrup in that sugar or in, the, in that chocolate. Now, we had no sweetener besides what's in those four chocolate chips in the pack. Uh, it adds basically 0.6 grams of sugars to that pack. And so that fits in our macro range, but some people don't like that. And we understand we won't make everybody happy, but we just try to avoid, we try to keep it natural, you know. Well, uh, not only that, they've now, got you how know, many other flavors to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. You don't want you don't want that one. There, there you go. There's one right next to it. <laughs> yeah, and that that is definitely an option. But you know, from the the paleo primal world, uh, paleo is a fantastic concept. You know, eat real food. How can you get? How could you argue against that? But since then, they've come out with all these. You know, paleo junk food. It's paleo versions. Yeah. If, if they're really paleo, I think they're stretching a lot of that. But paleo versions of every junk food thing that people are already addicted to, paleo brownies, paleo donuts, uh, the same th things happened with keto. You know, there are keto junk foods where it's sweetened with, you know, tons of erythritol. And in theory, you can subtract that and come up with a net carb that's really low. But we're trying to stay away from those keto junk food copies of other things and just stay natural. And so, you know, we, we figure that salted chocolate one is our most popular product. So a lot of people understand that, but every now and then someone will, will say that we're being deceptive because we don't have artificial sweeteners in there. And I think there's a good argument for staying away from those. Yeah. Uh, well, Hey, at least you, you know, it, and you're, you air it out. I mean, it's a, it's a business decision. And, the, and if you don't like the product <laughs> then pick up the, pick up the, you know, the, a different flavor. So I appreciate you uh, yeah. kind of coming. I mean, cause it's, it, it is personal, right? I mean, so, you know, I'll disclose, you know, I'll do that 90% even chocolate. So, and have a square and still be fine. So I, I think you gotta, like you mentioned earlier, you got to find out what works for you. So, but, um, I was, I don't know where I was heading when I said I was going to switch gears. Cause now I don't remember what gear I was switching to, but, uh, <clears throat> but, but, uh, kind of, kind of circling back uh, to your products. Uh, when you were talking about the oils, uh, one of the, uh, I don't know if you'd call that the fat ups or, are those, have you ever, th um, adding, adding that to a salad or putting that on your, your greens, I, I think is a, a fantastic 
concept that I've been trying to do myself. And I think you undersold it when we were talking about the uh, different situations. So going going out back to your your kind of uh, setting the stage of getting a, a burger without a bun and all that, getting the getting the salad and staying with the dressing, uh, you know, is is definitely something that it's, it's so easy to add that that oil of your choice to those grains to, to make them that much better. So uh, I I agree definitely, and you know even uh, we are we'll certainly pour avocado oil over the burger too and add another, you know, 30 grams of fat there. And, um, you know, keto, like you said, it's very unique. It's very individual, I guess. Everybody has their own take and everybody's body is different. And, you know, depending upon how insulin resistant you are or not, that'll impact how, you know, what you, what macronutrient range you want to live in. But if you know what works for you and you say, I want to get, X number of grams of fat and X number of grams of protein and the same with carbs, then it's just a matter of filling those in. And, you know, we make this house blend that you put in coffee, but we try to be really open that there are a lot of options. I mean, we'll get a heavy cream latte and, you know, now you've got a cup of heavy cream with just a couple carbs in it. Um, a lot of fat and we'll do that in the morning and that might be breakfast and we don't sell heavy cream. You know, it's, we try to promote things that work for us, whether it's our product or not. Yeah, that's fantastic. So if I was going to try to summarize some of those uh, actions that you, you laid out, you gave us your personal experience of when you didn't get enough fat, you were having cravings. So you had to dial that in. Yeah. Oh yeah. You had your, I called it family member, but your non-family member <laughs> that that used uh, keto to kind of leverage some of their, uh, you know, some of their health concerns, which I was fantastic. And then I found out a new nugget: the MTC oil is alcohol soluble. So that's on my <laughs> that's on my to do list to experiment with because I tend not to drink because I think it's difficult. And since we're about to go into the holidays, I know tomorrow. I'm going to be going to a family function for Thanksgiving where there'll be alcohol. So uh, I may be able to figure out something there. And then that, that fat up when you go the store, you know, whether that be pouring it on your burger, adding it to your salad uh, to, to get those micronutrients up to get a little more fat. I think those are four fantastic, fantastic takeaways. Anything, uh, anything I missed on the takeaways or anything that you want to add? that I, that I failed to cover because I lost track of where I was? Uh, no, 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 no worries. Uh, I think it's just, what amazes me is just the power of food. Like that lady Jade or Jillian up in Canada, both of them are pretty active in social media. And, you know, Jade, you, she was first diagnosed with epilepsy at age seven. And, uh, just two little over two years ago, she went keto. She decided she was frustrated with the medications and all the side effects. And, you know, now she's driving again. She thought she'd never be driving. And, and all of that was done with food. And then we see people using real food to help with, you know, PTSD and TBI issues, traumatic brain injury, uh, depression, Alzheimer's, and it's just real food. I think the big takeaway is that you can do a lot with food that a lot of the uh, media or studies won't support because there's no money in it, you know? And yeah, I mean, we would love for you to buy an F-bomb pack and have a, a packet of our product every day in some way, but you can go to the store and just get real food. And that's all we sell is real food and, and do everything you want just with, natural stuff, which to me is amazing. I mean, I think that is just the most fascinating part of diet and lifestyle and the power of food. Yeah. It's, it's, you don't have a, a lot of medical groups putting a lot of money behind a whole food diet for, for studies, which is, so that's, a, that's a balance that we're always going to think, uh, at least currently in the metal in the medical community are going to be challenging. So um, so your website is dropanfbomb.com. So it's fantastic to remember. And I, I know because I was out there, I've been out there many a times. So you've got other stories. Um, is it 
uh, is is uh, she listed on your? Uh, it's not about us, but uh, people people who use or friends. I think you maybe have it under the friends section. Yeah, we've got uh, friends. Uh, we've got a group of people who have you know provided some nice kind of little self stories, backstories. They range from ultra runners, people doing endurance uh, activities, endurance athletes uh, who have found that cutting out the carbs and converting to a fat burning body helps them with just these amazing feats of endurance that I could never do, you know, running 50 or 100 miles. And then we have Jade and uh, others who use, you know, keto lifestyle, not just our products, but the lifestyle itself uh, for therapeutic or medical reasons. We have parents who you know, send F-bomb packs to school with their kids, which always kind of cracks us up. But they're looking for something, even if their child isn't keto, they're just looking for something natural and low in sugar and, you know, preservative, additive free. And um, yeah, we do have some of those on our, our friends page. Uh, Eva, Eva Rupert, she was on several of the Discovery Channel Naked and Afraid series, and she's a big fan of our stuff. And you know, she's been out in the wilderness, like with no food, and she definitely knows the power of fat and being fat adapted. And um, yeah, they're all listed in our friends section with their pictures and some interesting stories. So that's that's fantastic. So on the web page, I, I just glanced at it right now. So the sections are why fat, and you can follow that down. And it's got your, your story and then links to your friends and then resources. And it even has uh, references to books. So quite a bit of information out there besides your products. So uh, I guess uh, if there's um, anything, if, uh, if I didn't miss anything that I'd like to just appreciate you spending your time telling us your story. I think that's what helps all of us here in our personal experiences. I think that's what helps us all improve and find our health journey. So I, again, thanks for t giving us the time. Well, thank you. You know, I, uh, once you figure out what, what's, what works for you and your way of life, it's just a matter of trying to make it easy. And, you know, don't spend 20 years like I did figuring out I was eating too much protein, but, uh, uh, once I figured out what worked for me and it just became simple and I, I feel very fortunate that at 56, I've, you know, got my health and I feel quite young and I think I attribute that to, to the food. Well, there's a lot of Thank people. Thank you for your are, time and your message. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are jealous of that statement right there. Let's just we'll we'll end with that. Um, if you click over in the show notes, um, I'll have uh, those key action takeaways, uh, links to all the social medias, and any information about F bomb. So definitely try to uh, support the movement if you can. So tune in. Uh, I don't I don't actually know uh, what we got coming up next, but definitely we're going to do some. Uh, I believe that we're going to keep with the pet the. Uh, the, uh, the meals and the simple meals. So I think next week is more on the simple meal. So stay tuned.